Should you put your money into NEO? Let's explore its business and determine whether it's a good long-term investment or not. I'm going to share with you a pessimistic narrative, and then we're going to look at the business itself and see if the metrics either reinforce that pessimism or debunk it. NEO faces stiff competition from both established automakers like Tesla, BMW, and Mercedes, as well as newer entrants in the EV market like Xpeng, BYD, and Rivian. Competing on price, technology, and production scale is a challenge. A significant portion of NEO's revenue comes from China, making the company vulnerable to China-specific risks such as changing government policies, economic slowdowns, and increasing local competition. Limited international presence amplifies this risk. NEO stock has been highly volatile, subject to sharp swings in response to news about the broader EV industry, market sentiment, or even political tensions between the US and China. This volatility can be risky for conservative investors. Despite impressive revenue growth, NEO is still not consistently profitable. The company continues to post losses, which raises concerns about its ability to sustain long-term growth without turning a profit. To fund its growth, NEO has issued additional shares and convertible debts multiple times. Continued dilution through new equity offerings can reduce the value of existing shareholder stakes. Like many automakers, NEO has faced significant supply chain disruptions, particularly with the global chip shortage. These disruptions can delay production, increase costs, and harm NEO's ability to meet demand. NEO has received considerable financial support from the Chinese government, particularly when it comes on the verge of bankruptcy in 2020. Over-reliance on government backing could be a risk if policies shift or subsidies are reduced. NEO's aggressive spending on research, development, and expansion has resulted in a high cash burn rate. If it fails to achieve profitability soon, the company may need to raise additional capital, further diluting shareholders or increasing its debt burden. NEO has begun to explore international markets, particularly in Europe, but its success outside China is far from certain. Entering new markets poses significant challenges such as brand recognition, regulatory compliance, and establishing a service network. And finally, NEO is exposed to a macroeconomic risk, including rising interest rates, inflation, and economic slowdowns, particularly in China. Additionally, ongoing tensions between the U.S. and China could lead to restrictions on Chinese companies listed on U.S. exchanges, adding another layer of risk for U.S. investors. Okay, that gives us our pessimistic narrative, but what do the numbers actually say about the business? We can see here the company's financial health. Based on its earnings growth, which ideally we want to be at 20% or better, its profit margins, which we want to be at 40% or better, its operational effectiveness, which we want at 80% or better, its average employee value, which we want at $400,000 or higher, and its debt stated on its quick ratio, which we want at 2.5 or better. We then can determine how robust the business is. By adding the points given to each metric, we can clearly measure from a total of 25 points whether the business is healthy enough, either disproving our pessimistic narrative or reinforcing it with weak metrics. Next, we can see the opportunities afforded to shareholders in the company important for folks like you and me who are thinking of buying the stock. Based on its dividend yield, which ideally we want at 4% or higher, its payout ratio, which we want at close to 0%, its cash and its equivalent, which we want at $75 billion or higher, and stock returns to a maximum of 10 years, which we want at 15% or higher. We then can determine how much you're benefiting as a shareholder but at the same time, how much the company is spending to accommodate these shareholders. By adding the points given to each metric, we can clearly measure from a total of 20 points, whether you're more likely to be seen as an investor of the stock or merely speculating on it. Third, we can see the business valuation of the stock. Based on its P-E ratio, which we want as low as possible, 
its peg ratio, which we also want as low as possible, its 200 day simple moving average, which we want to be negative 10% or worse, its short float, which ideally we want to be as close to zero, and the average Wall Street rating, which we want to be as close to one as we can get. We can then get a pretty good idea whether the stock is too optimistic about its business, thus proving our pessimistic narrative, or if we're looking at a real bargain. By adding the points given to each metric, we can clearly measure from a total of 25 points. Now we can add up our 14 metrics and it'll give us a point total, which we can compare with our pessimistic narrative. Based on a 0 to 70 point scale, we total our metrics to get us our business grade. If the number is above 35, which is an average business, we have successfully disproven our pessimistic narrative, making the company a good business to own. But if that number is further down the point scale, we can be justified in saying that our pessimistic narrative can be justified based on the numbers the company is putting out. Next, we're going to determine the company's intrinsic value. I base the intrinsic value on my 30-year intrinsic value model, which incorporates a 10% margin of safety. Since I only look for long-term investments, the longer I project out, the more certain I can be of the numbers since I assume after 10 years, the company begins to accelerate its decline to the point where it's slowing by 5% every year until the end of time which makes a more conservative estimate. So based on my model, we can see the stock's intrinsic value as well as its relative value compared to its current price as of this video. The scale is from 0 to 100, with 50 points being a fairly priced stock, and anything over that means the stock is undervalued relative to its current price. I do put some stock into the intrinsic value, but only 10% of my analysis accounts for it. It's important because I do believe that the intrinsic value is subjective on your belief in the company's future, whether you're overly optimistic or if you're extremely bearish on it. This is mostly a baseline number you can anchor to. Before we continue, join my Patreon. You'll get access to every grade for every company I've analyzed. It's updated all the time. Go to patreon.com forward slash growth shares or click on the link in the description. I'm now going to combine the point totals for the business and the intrinsic value to get our company's final grade. We have our pessimistic narrative and now we have our final grade based on these weighted factors to compare whether our narrative matches up with the company. The scale is from 0 to 100, with 50 being an average investment and any total above that being a good or even great investment. This final grade is my base and it will supplant the pessimistic narrative I drew up at the beginning of this video, or it'll reinforce it if the final grade is below 50. Now, I want to note here about investing with your emotions. I know many of you watching are new investors, and like many at the beginning of their journey, it can be difficult if you own this stock, and my conclusion was different from what you wanted to hear. It's important to take emotion out of the equation. If you disagree with me in any way, you shouldn't take it personally even if you do have a financial stake in the stock. Realize this, if the stock is as good as you believe it is, it'll go up regardless of what either of us say. So if you're wondering what kind of investor you are, you can take my quiz on just that. It's a quick 10 question assessment that'll let you know whether you're a value investor, a growth investor, or anything in between. I left a link to the video in the description. If you found this analysis helpful, consider liking this video and subscribing. Invest wisely and as always, take care of your money.